A police and crime commissioner is required to provide one or more policing plans and to see that the chief constable puts it or them into practice. The policing plan is on the left. The cover seems to imply that its author is the commissioner. Under that it says, safer in Sussex. It uses an old advertising trick. The copywriter assumed that most people would take that to mean that Purcell cleaned white clothes better than competitive products could clean them. Not that they made red clothes whiter, or white clothes whiter than they were before they were washed. What is safer in Sussex supposed to mean? Don't members of the public question whether they are safer in Brighton than they would be in Keswick? Or whether Sussex is safer now than it was before the Commissioner's chats with other public servants replaced Sussex Police Authority? The Commissioner's blurb says that the Police and Crime Commissioner, in consultation with the Chief Constable and the people of Sussex, is required to issue a Police and Crime Plan. That is not what the relevant legislation lays down. It says that the Police and Crime Commissioner for a Police Area must issue a Police and Crime Plan within the financial year in which each ordinary election is held. A Police and Crime Commissioner may at any time issue a Police and Crime Plan. A Police and Crime Commissioner may vary a Police and Crime Plan. To show the plans in action, here are extracts from other YouTube videos. It would be very helpful to the panel, Commissioner, if you would tell us why you see that you need a deputy. The workload is quite significant and will continue to increase. Perhaps you could tell us in what way you consider Steve Waite to complement uh, your skills. He has um, extensive knowledge and experience of public sector finance. He has experience as a local councillor working at a senior level. And uh, he was the previous chairman of the police authority. How did you hear about uh, this role? Uh, where did you see it advertised? And secondly, um, given that the role is billed as a full-time task, a uh, full-time job, um, given that you are currently a West Sussex County Councillor as well as a Cabinet Member at Worthing Borough Council. In the event that you are appointed to the role of Deputy Commissioner, will you in intend to stand down from West Sussex County Council and Worthing Borough Council? How did I hear about the job? And I was phoned up by the Commissioner on a Friday evening at about 7 o'clock in January. It's my intention to, if appointed, to do this job on a full-time basis and I will look at my other commitments. The Commissioner's response, as published on her website, said that the Commissioner had decided to formally appoint Mr Steve Waite as Deputy Police and Crime Commissioner. I have worked very closely with inspectorate bodies such as uh, Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabulary, um, uh, the uh, Officer's Surveillance Commissioner, the Information Commissioner's Office. So having that breadth of skills wider than just operational policing is what I can uh, bring to this role. That person spent 28 years working as a member of Sussex Police. No one questioned the wisdom of the Commissioner's appointment of another Sussex policeman to the office which is supposed to hold Sussex police to account. I was surprised to read in the Argus Co UK for the 20th of July 2013 Sussex police praised for work at tackling domestic violence. The first sentence of the story says, Sussex Police has become the first police force in the country to gain White Ribbon Award status, awarded in its recognition of its work at tackling domestic violence. The White Ribbon Campaign's website words the Sussex Police achievement differently. 
It has been awarded in recognition of its commitment to the White Ribbon campaign. That suggests to me that professed commitment rather than any actual accomplishment might be behind the award. That idea is supported by another statement on the campaign's website, which until recently explained that to get the award, an organisation had to fill in a questionnaire and there is an annual contribution of £250 for the award. So, as far as I can make out, it seems likely that someone filled in a questionnaire for Sussex Police pledging support and in return white ribbon status was awarded. The Argus story tells us that the Sussex Police and Crime Commissioner said Sussex Police will be the first force in the country to be awarded white ribbon status. The white ribbon campaign focuses on the obligation of men to speak out against domestic abuse and violence to women. I am working closely with Chief Constable Martin Richards to ensure that all Sussex officers and staff demonstrate their commitment to the campaign through the wearing of a white ribbon lapel pin. Two days later, the Argus published this story. Sussex Police given white ribbon award. The caption under the photograph reads, Sussex Police have become the first in the country to gain a white ribbon award. The person giving the award is Mr Green, the executive director of White Ribbon Campaign UK, who says of himself, In March 2011, Chris Green was awarded an NVQ Level 4 in the management of volunteers. It may be that Sussex Police is the only force in the country to have the award, because it is the only force with Mrs Bourne as its commissioner. Um, I'd like to thank you for your support with the White Ribbon campaign. Here we are. And, and it's very good to see you gentlemen you're all wearing yours, which is, I hope our team are too, yes they yes. are. <laughs> yes, the gentlemen are wearing theirs, ha ha. There's the Chief Constable, look at his tie, not his lapel. An Assistant Chief Constable, Sussex Police Director of Finance and Commissioner's Office, Chief Executive, Deputy Chief Executive, who has since given in his notice, and Chief Finance Officer. The Commissioner herself has a less obtrusive display on her right pocket, more like a fashion statement rather than a perambulating advertisement. Um, it's a, it's a, a global campaign that uh, is, is for men to stand against domestic violence and make a, and make a stand to repeat their obligation to do that. Um, and I was really encouraged because Sussex Police, I believe, are the first force in England Correct. to achieve white ribbon status. When someone complains to the Commissioner about the police, she usually says that she will take the matter up with the Chief Constable at her weekly meetings with him. When news surfaced that plainclothes police officers in Brighton were tempting beggars to commit crime, the local paper had a headline that surprised me, so I noted it down on the Sussex Police page of my website. Today, the Argus Co. UK published another story about Sussex Police. Under the headline, Police and Crime Commissioner to Take Force to Task Over Undercover Tactics on Beggars, the story began, The Police and Crime Commissioner will quiz the Chief Constable after the Argus revealed undercover police targeting beggars. I added a brief comment to the two dozen already in place. I used to view webcasts featuring the Sussex Police Principal Public Relations proponent, but abandoned that soon after seeing a few minutes of what seemed to be a scripted exchange between the People's Conservative representative and Chief Constable Richards. I wonder whether any of your readers can find a definition of take to task which better fits the apparently rehearsed exchanges between the SPPPRP and the Sussex Police Chief Constable than the first definition that I read allows. Censure severely or angrily. More about the dishonest and bizarre organisation which sold the award of the White Ribbon is revealed in this video. 
Sussex Police and Crime Panel met on that day with this agenda. The only substantial item on the agenda was the proposed precept in item 4. A precept is an order issued by one local authority to another specifying the rate of tax to be charged on its behalf, in this case what the Sussex Police Commissioner and the panel order that Sussex householders are to be made to pay for policing in the next financial year. Um, and as I said before, and uh, you know, I, I say again, when I go out to the public all the time, I'm, as a Conservative, for me, raising taxes just, it shouldn't be done. We should be putting money back into people's pockets. They're hard working. Now, the proposal you've got before you is not um, a proposal to uh, cover the, any cuts that are having to be made in the force. This is added um, investment around three key areas, two very significant risk areas. For me, if the, you know, I'm here to represent the public, and the public is saying, yes, we're behind you on this one. Yes, we're happy to do this. That, that for me, is the, the most important thing. The Commissioner had agreed with the Chief Constable that he should have as much as he could get without having the public vote on it. And the police panel agreed to the increase of 3.6%. The Commissioner evidently changed her mind about taxing people, either because she was too feeble to go against the Chief Constable's demands, or because she was gullible enough to believe the two unrepresentative surveys showed that the public were keen for her to ask for the largest increase possible. Her explanation of the figures was unconvincing. The video, Sussex Police Want More Money, gives details. Mr Chair, my proposal is that the panel supports a precept of 3.6%, or a figure up to this amount, whichever is permissible without triggering a referendum. Those in favour of uh, Councillor Smith, do you propose a second? Those in favour, please. That's, that's duly carried. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, members will know that uh, recently C Chief Constable Martin Richards, just before Christmas, announced his retirement after, I think, 32 or 33 years' service as a police officer. He's done um, the last six years as Chief Constable in Sussex, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, has um, given a fantastic... Um, record of himself. I don't know what you mean by saying that he has given a record of himself, and I do not agree that he has been fantastic in any sense of that tiresomely overused word. I first learned of Richard's appointment by Sussex Police Authority on the 26th of July 2007. He had become Chief Constable of Wiltshire in September 2004. In January 2006, Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabulary published a report on the Force's Professional Standards Department, the department that deals with complaints from the public. HMIC rated it as only fair, the three other available grades being good, excellent and poor. More wide-ranging was the HMIC's Wiltshire Constabulary Baseline Assessment of October 2006. This graded Wiltshire Police for 23 categories of policing. Grades awarded were Excellent None, Good 8, of which 4 were for resource use, Fair 11 and Poor 4 for neighbourhood policing and problem solving, managing critical incidents and major crime, tackling serious and organised criminality, and protecting vulnerable people. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that Mr Richards, Stuart Richards of uh, Wiltshire Constabulary, has agreed to take up the position that's been formally offered to him. As regards the general standard of policing under Richards, my YouTube video Sussex Police Still Substandard deals with the most wide-ranging report on Sussex Police during Richard's time, from 2009 on. Still refers to the fact that Sussex Police was so bad on one of ten pledges that remedial action on that and a further report were required, 
after which the overall grade for the force was still fair. Fair is awarded where performance is variable and falls short of the required standard. Remedial action is needed.